Well, Matt Bryden is the executive chairman of the think tank Sahan Research. He's also former coordinator for the United Nations Monitoring Group on Somalia and Eritrea. He joins us now live from my Nairobi. Thanks so much for joining us, Matt. Let me just get your outlook for Somalia for the coming year. I mean, 2017 saw the worst terrorist attack in the country. Could the coming year actually bring the kind of stability Somalia needs, or are the conditions still not there? Well, the year started uh, with a great deal of hope, and um, there is still certainly potential for Somalia to improve over the next 12 months in 2018. Unfortunately, uh, 2017 ends with the federal government in crisis, um, having just arrested a very prominent opposition leader, accusing him of treason. Uh, he's been released uh, just this morning uh, by a court in Mogadishu, and uh, this has prompted parliamentarians to uh, launch a motion calling for impeachment of the president. And so at a time when Somalia really most needs to come together um, to prepare for a year of stability and growth, uh, when the African Union forces that have been providing security are now beginning to transition out and to draw down their forces. Somalia really needs stability. And uh, unfortunately, at least as we speak, um, politically, the, the situation is moving in the other direction. So there's the political instability, and there's also al-Shabaab, which poses a huge security challenge to the country. What do you make of its capacity as an organization to continue to terrorize the country and to recruit new members going forward? Well, al-Shabaab is, uh, they certainly can't be dismissed. They're a transnational threat. They're active in at least five countries of the region, although Somalia is their base. And they've shown that they're capable of tremendous destruction and violence. But the real strength of al-Shabaab is the weakness of its adversaries. Um, it, it lives, it thrives in a political and institutional vacuum. So essentially, because the federal government is um, restricted to Mogadishu and its environs, and because the federal member states or the provinces of Somalia are still embryonic, much of Somalia is ungoverned. And that is the space within which al-Shabaab operates. As long as the government continues to, to grow and strengthen, um, if political inclusivity is improved, if the federal member states and their security forces, especially their police and their, their uh, paramilitary police, are, are uh, supported, then Shabab will have less and less space. It's not a popular movement. Um, it's not a particularly well-armed movement. Um, and so its prospects over the long term are very poor indeed. But it does require the federal government and Somalia's member states to come together in a, in a concerted effort to end this threat. Okay, like any developing economy, though, Somalia desperately needs uh, investment. Do you foresee any growth uh, in, in investor confidence this year, or will Somalia remain largely dependent on uh, foreign aid? Well, there's, there are already signs of, of investment. Um, many of Somalia's major towns have seen uh, considerable growth in recent years. You see uh, high rises coming up. You see new businesses opening. Uh, what we don't see as much of is foreign direct investment. And that's partly because of insecurity. It's also partly because of a very weak regulatory framework. Um, Somalia is not yet in a position to enforce contracts and um, insurance is, of course, very expensive for major investment. Um, I think for the time being, we're looking at a federal government whose primary source of revenue is the port of Mogadishu and the airport of Mogadishu. It doesn't really have much inland revenue. The federal member states collect uh, their taxes, also heavily dependent on ports and airports. Um, and so at the moment, the um, the scale of, of, of revenues and the budget that the government can um, can assemble, can, can deploy for its goods and services is still far below what a normal functioning country could afford. Okay. So I think it's, it's reasonable to assume that for the next few years, Somalia is going to be aid dependent. Okay, Matt Bryden joining us live there from Nairobi. Thank you so much for that.